how do you change a system that was designed to oppress and keep certain people and groups in power, especially a system that's been operating for centuries and is integral to the foundation of what is America. I just try to start where I can, where we can, um, just through conversations. That's really how a lot of these things change. Um, and one of my favorite quotes actually is by Miriam Kaba, and she says, everything worthwhile is done with others. That is just so applicable to being an upstander, to pushing back on all of the isms that exist in our um, city, state, country, world. And any field that exists really to make change has to take an intersectional approach. It's, it really is an abusive relationship that the system has with us, right? Our, um, it likes to gaslight us, um, make it feel like it's our fault with the position that we're in. Um, not the systems that have led us to where we are today. And this they have this like bootstrap mentality. Like you have to really work hard for this in order to um, get what you need. And that's that's not healthy. Um, it, it uses this privilege to determine what we um, are and aren't um, deserving of. Coercion and threats to have us concede um, and intimidation to make us feel powerless and like we have no voice. But we do have power, we do have a voice and we can do that when we come together and try to push back on some of this. You know, as, as we continue to see these uh, progressive initiatives, you know, as evidenced by myself being elected as a city council member in the city of Minneapolis, there's always a backlash. And the backlash always falls on um, trans people of color. The issues that you, the statistics that you talked about around housing, around employment, around access to education, those, again, are in interrelated um, with race. Right, and so black and brown uh, people, undocumented people, are already experiencing um, inequities in our culture and society. And then you layer on gender nonconformity or um, a uh, different gender identity than what was assigned at birth, and um, people have um, even more um, um, burdens right. on there and and become more susceptible to the violence. I really, absolutely believe that um, that housing. Um, Access to housing, access to employment are the main reasons why uh, trans and gender non-conforming women of color are suffering from so much violence. It's really important to acknowledge the lived experiences of women and then not cast that judgment on, well, you know, what do we need for you to do to leave because you just need to leave. Uh, you know, acknowledging that if they share uh, a residence, if they share children, it may be very difficult for her to leave. She knows what she needs to be safe. She knows when uh, lethality may be at its high point. And we know statistically that lethality is at its highest point when she is getting ready to leave. My ex-husband had requested a non-speedy trial every time that it was scheduled. So then it was like, you know, we get um, that adrenaline or that um, excitement that it's really gonna happen this time. And then it gets canceled and then we have to wait again. And then when it did finally happen at trial, I was told that he was um, pleading self-defense, but I had no idea how or why or what was going to take place when I took the stand. I didn't know what to expect. And I, the um, story that he had created in his mind took me by surprise, but then also, you know, his lawyers just drilling it and drilling it and drilling it and asking me over and over and over again. So I had to be strong and I also had to relive and retell my story. Um, and my kids had to do the same, but, and not even just the testifying, you know, this is their father. This was the man, you know, that helped me raise all of our kids. Um, and it wasn't always bad, you know? So it was really hard on all five of them. As a result of a criminal justice system floored and governed by traditional laws and practices that has normalized and been allowed to practice in years of systemic injustices that marginalize female victims of sex crimes, especially women of color. My daughter's perpetrator was set free, possibly to victimize someone else due to a technicality. As a mother, I wish I can change the hands of time in which these traumatic events occurred, but I can't. But what I can do and what I will do is continue to fight for legislative changes to be made to a failing criminal justice system that has been allowed to continue following years of systemic practices that allows them to doubly victimize and marginalize women based on either their race or their gender. 
Victims are victims and perpetrators are perpetrators. The same precedence and enthusiasm seen given to victims that are victimized in high profile cases, such as Harvey Weinstein, Jeffrey Epstein, and Bill Cosby cases, should be given to victims like my daughter and other victims whose perpetrators are non reputable offenders. There needs to be maybe new rules set in place, conversations to educate people on how to deal with these kinds of situations, because it's understandable that not everyone would know how to, you know, meet the situation, how to talk about it, especially men, I feel like. Like, I feel like that played a big part in why I didn't get, I guess, the, I guess the response that I was looking for, because the initial people that came to talk to me were male officers, so they didn't have, like, the empathy I feel like a woman would have. There should be, there should be a conversation had, there should be rules set in place, and I just feel for all the survivors out there that are going through something and may not have someone like my mom to advocate for me. If it wasn't for her staying on top of all the people that she spoke to, having a little book with names and dates and everything, the case would have been thrown out, and it would have been, like, it never happened. So I just feel for anyone out there that doesn't have a support system like I do. And I just wonder like, where's their justice? How are they going to get justice? You know? Um.